cheater and the cheated. And it is a, it is a game just like the kids when they uh, hide and search, no? hide and search. Uh, so somebody close their eyes and say, I'm counting to ten. Uh, no, where are they? Okay, then you can find one or two. No, they change. The other one closes his eyes, the other side. So the cheaters and the cheaters just like that game. You get, you get a counting to ten to see what kind of cheating you want to do. <laughs> and then you get caught. And then you, are, then you can play the game. <laughs> cheaters and the cheaters, you know, where, where, at what end you want to stand. My dear, my dear friends. So as a start of note of this mela, I recognize that I was a bit heavy tonight. But I think we are here to find real friends, right? I think that is the key note why you made it to come here. To find out, do I have any friends in number five? Am I going to meet any friends from South America or from India or from anywhere? Are there some real friends of the animals out there? Real defenders of human rights, earth rights, animal rights? Are there people worth my while to keep in contact with after? I know, without having it announced, that is the actual reason why you came here. Because we are need, in need of friends. Because we have a soft heart and we want to have friends, even more than friends, we want to love each other so much. Because Krishna loves all of us. So we have to understand what is friend, what's not friend, and how to become a friend. How you can become a friend. That's what you have to study here. If you really want to have more friends, be friend. Befriend them. And that means, like, we always learn from our spiritual teacher, Srila Prabhupada, that you have to learn how to make yourself be loved by the others. And you do, do that by screaming or by injustices or by being a lamenter who always every time says, not me again, not me again, not me again. Why so much injustice, you know, especially at the time of service, uh, we say, not me again, not me again, no, no. Turn it the other way around. Me first, please. If you need any help, I'm available. No? Because in the service attitude is the friendship. Like, makes me think of Bhugarbha Goswami. Bhugarbha Goswami. When Lokanath Goswami was sent to Vindavan, you know, he came to Lord Chaitanya, he took initiation, he became his disciple, and then the next day Mahaprabhu said, you go to Vindavan. And Lokanath said, I left my house, everything, I, did, I came for such a distance to be with Lord Chaitanya. Now one day after accepting me as disciple, he sends me uh, 1,200 kilometers far away and not ask me to even come back. Oh, and he was crying, crying, crying. What did I do? Why was I condemned into such a distance from my Lord? When Bhugarva Goswami saw him crying, he said, if I go with you, will you go? Will you follow Mahaprabhu's order if I go with you? And looking at the crying I saw this, this Brahmachari's smiling face. I'll go with you. So they have permission, can he go with him? Wow. Yes. Lokanath Goswami was the first man to discover the holy places of Lord Krishna in Vrindavan. The, the other six Goswamis came later and helped him. But Lokanath Goswami alone, single-handedly, discovered something like 333 places of holy pastimes in Brajmanda. <laughs> So he was an empowered agent, and Mahaprabhu had just been waiting for him. Oh, there is the guy who is going to do the job in Vrindavan. Thank you, big hug, get out, go do the job. <laughs> he was about to die. He mentioned Krishna, you are the Supreme Lord, and he sends you away. It sounds like 
untolerable. But this is the type of thing, union, separation, service. You show yourself who you are by your service attitude. And spontaneous loving devotional service is something very elevated. Something very, 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 very elevated. Spontaneous loving devotional service. I, I, I can hardly even think of anything more touching, more glorious than those people who are ready to do something just for the sake of love. Love and friendship. Profound sincerity. So, I could extend myself on this topic very, very much more because it is really a, 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 really a, a hot potato subject. So, but I think you got enough to digest for today, and also I think we have much more time, especially to dwell on this divine friendship. So let, let us make the subject of this mela, divine friendship and solidarity for all those who are suffering in the world. And then we have had a really good mela if we accomplish something to be able to uh, serve the need of the earth further, because this is actually a learning seminar. It's not a joy mela, it is a jai mela. Huh? A jai means a victory mela. Joy mela that can, everybody goes to a party to have some joy, no? But here we are looking for ayaya, for jai, or for victory against illusion, for strength and, and, and for increased awareness and to be Become that Mahatma Gandhi saying, to be the change you want to see. To be the change you want to see. Thanks a lot for listening. And I hope that you have a question. Because then I can speak a little more. Because question and answer are very important elements of growth. Because only when you ask questions, you get deeper, you make sure you understand the topic, and then you can register it as approved. You put the approved seal on something only once your inner quest or your inner uh, question mark has been dissolved. Because if everything inside of you is only question marks, that is a shelter wall of not wanting any new wisdom to approach yourself. So here you go ahead. Who has the first question? Paramatma is my sure question. <laughs> but before we get we go to his questions, <laughs> say any other question. Not to discriminate against him. Hi, <laughs> Jama. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're the official questioners. <laughs> because they know I suffer when there's no question. <laughs> because my guru told me if there's no question, there's two options. Number one, nobody understood anything of what you said. <laughs> Number two, they accept everything and they're ready to surrender. <laughs> But even then we expect that they ask the question how to put it all into practice. I'm now ready, ready to go. Any other question besides Paramatma? <laughs> okay, then we start with Paramatma. Thank you very much for the lecture and I hope you will give more lectures more heavy, especially for myself. But uh, I would like um, to, to know your viewpoint, how we can not only motivate ourselves, and how we can motivate our world brothers. Mm -hmm. We have special skills when we are specialists in yoga, when we are specialists in spoon revolution. How we can motivate them? What's the most, what's the most important basic for them? What's the most important to motivate others? <coughs> world brothers, world sisters. Yes. For the kick in the butt. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> You know, the most difficult thing in life is when nobody gives you a kick in the butt. You know why? Because then you have to give yourself a kick in the butt to get going. Because we are kind of like a 
slow motion lazy models usually, you know? Not, not like a portion, you know? Huh? Zero to hundred in how many seconds? <laughs> no, 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 we are like slow motion, you know? Uh, and uh, therefore it is sometimes necessary to be pushed a little bit. Prabhupada claimed or he described himself, I'm a pusher. And he always told us when we came to Prabhupada said, Prabhupada, we opened the temple in New Zealand. Prabhupada just answered, good, double it. <laughs> but, 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 but Prabhupada, we already opened one. Double it. Okay, Prabhupada. Then a year later, he decided, Prabhupada, we have now three temples in New Zealand. Isn't that wonderful? Great, double it. <laughs> but Prabhupada, you said that last year. Double it. <laughs> Prabhupada was really kicking us in the butt, I mean, if you want to say the reality. And Prabhupada made clear, clear, clear statements. So, for example, he said, I'll go there where the devotees distribute more books. Where they are really trying to distribute this, these books to the conditioned souls. There I would go and stay with them. Prabhupada said, wait, we went bananas when we heard that. It was like, they were like the, the, the Seahawks war, war call. You know how that is? Oh, something like that. It was when that the world, Prabhupada is going to come and stay with us. If we distribute more books, did you hear that? Hey, Bhakta Joe, did you hear that? Yeah, I heard it. So what? Well, let's get back bigger book bags because we have to go and rush out there to get Prabhupada to come here. And Prabhupada did that with us. He called a transcendental competition. I know very well what it was. Because believe it or not, in 1976, we won the, the Worldwide Christmas Marathon with the second time in Brazil. Yeah. Prabhupada actually organized the second time competition. Nowadays we're starting again. Now we have a, a, a Spoon Revolution Ministry competition. We have a competition of Oki distribution in South America. But it's only for fun and for not sleeping so much. And for becoming more identified and more spiritually committed to what we are doing. So Prabhupada had that done so. So when, when we won the marathon in Brazil, that was an upheaval. Because we defeated Europe and India and the United States from Brazil. <laughs> Just for fun. But we had a lot of fun, I tell you. To win that marathon, there was one devotee called Advaya. Advaya was so incredible. He actually sold in one day 1,600 Shiva Bhagavad Gita. I, I made a, a picture of how high the column was like a 14 meter hole, high column of books, which he distributed in one, in one day, just like one by one. Huh? He did that in the public transport system of Sao Paulo in the Christmas season. I don't know, he, he had the magic mantra. He said, the Bhagavatam makes your Christmas a success. Don't lose, don't miss out on it. And just everybody touched Bhagavatam. And he worked for 14 or 15 hours non-stop. He, he broke all the world records. Selling thousand, six hundred Shiva Bhagavatam in one day. <laughs> They were not that thick South American style. They were, but there were still, but there were still books of more than hundred pages, and so it makes no difference, you know. But that's what happened. So this was Prabhupada. He would push us, and if you are ever in a position that nobody pushes you, or you don't allow anybody to push you, well, sorry for you then, because then you have to keep yourself in the body. That's possible if you can try. You can try when you stand up next, try to kick yourself in your own body. It works. Huh? So then, then you say, get going. 
Don't stay here lazy. Get something done. Apply your talents. And one way or another, no, this is a little funny, the answer, but actually, you know, motivation is, uh, motivation comes through assessing your relationship to Krishna. I said today, I don't remember in the conversation, that I, I was a Sanctan man, I, I was also Sanctan leader in the early days of Prabhupada, and I never ever did anything by force. I was never forced to do anything, and I also never forced anybody to do anything. It was always on the level of enthusiasm, gratefulness, compassion, and a bit of love for a good competition. Let's go to my Kunta competition. If you win, you feel good. If you lose, you feel better. Because you know, I could have done more. I will really still have to push myself more. It's only for that purpose. So, what competition we are talking about? Any competition. Any competition for service. For increasing our love. That is our real, our real life. Increasing our love. And I tell you that. I love to be in Nanda Farfa again and to meet all of you here. It's the best thing that could have happened to me. Sometimes people say, why not the father again and again? Can we meet somewhere else? Because you know people sometimes, they say, oh, I've seen the father so many times. Maybe not necessary to go to the next mela. But the fact of the matter is, <coughs> Radha Gopi Balaba, they have hosted this loving meeting for so many years. And it's the best place. It has all the facility. It's not a sense enjoyment place. It's a place for retreats. And if you're now in the beach, you know, you don't, you don't get anybody come to the class. <laughs> Everybody running around to beach resorts, things like that. So, and and the the Hungarian devotees, the, the equipment of uh, Nanda Farfa, have made it possible by their love and their work to have us here again and again, and we should give them a very nice applause for that. <laughs>